Hell Pie is a self-described, obscene 3D action platformer and collectathon, and the third title from German developer Sluggerfly, who previously released Ben in Ed in 2015 and Ben in Ed Blood Party in 2018. While Ben and Ed and its multiplayer successor were respectable first attempts at 3D platforming, Sluggerfly looked to do something new and fresh with Hell Pie, while maintaining their signature crude humor and comic violence, and looking toward more traditional platforming. Hell Pie, published by Head Up, released on July 21st, 2022 for PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and PC. In Hell Pie, you play as Nate, the demon of bad taste at Sin Inc., located somewhere within Hell. There, you're tasked by Satan, the head of Sin Inc., of course, to procure a pie for his birthday celebration, even though that's not part of your job description. To begin your journey, you find Sin Inc.'s chef who, in turn, asks you to help him collect the ingredients he needs which are located throughout the game's various hub worlds and levels. Sin Inc. itself acts as an overworld which takes you to those different hub worlds within which you come across various platforming levels. Sin Inc. also houses the Offices of the Seven Deadly Sins. Not far into your journey, you get paired up with an enslaved cherub from the supermarket within Sin Inc. The cherub, named Nugget, is perpetually chained to you. Nugget enhances your traversal, acting as a living grappling hook and giving you the ability to swing around. He also enhances your combat, giving you the ability to swing at enemies from a few yards away. Nugget comes with his own skill tree, allowing you to upgrade your abilities along the way however you see fit, purchasing those new skills with hidden collectibles. Through sacrifices at shrines, you also gain access to various different sets of horns. The initial set of horns acts as a sort of witcher sense which marks points of interest around you. The first new set of horns you gain gives you rocket sprinting speed. The second set allows you to smash through weakened walls, and the third lights up the area around you, and so on. All in all, the game presents you with a wide variety of options when it comes to traversal, utility, and combat. You quickly learn that there is no correct way to get from one platform to the next or to take out a crowd of enemies. How you play is up to you. You also don't need to acquire every ingredient in each level to move on to the next hub world. After you've acquired enough ingredients, the chef will call you up and give you the option to stick around the current level or to move on whenever you decide to do so. In a collectathon like this, it's nice knowing that you don't need to collect every single thing to keep the game moving forward. You can always come back to collect more, and if you're a fan of that, then there's a ton of stuff for you to collect. But it's nice to get a breath of fresh air with some new levels after a little while. Alright, now that we've got the basics down, let's get into the details. Alright, let me say this right away before we get started. The demo for Hell Pie on Steam is an incredibly poor representation of the final game. The demo is buggy, the controls feel loose, and the specific level featured in the demo is probably the least interesting level in the entire game. After playing the demo, I was not feeling excited about this game, but I'm happy to say that the demo does not at all represent how the full release version actually feels. Among the most important aspects of platformers is their general feel and movement. Hell Pie's controls are responsive and feel polished beyond that of your typical indie 3D platformer. It's not on par with something like a 3D Mario game, but it's about as close as you're going to get, especially outside of the AAA space. Traversal is extremely fun and satisfying. It's similar to Spider-Man on PS4 in that it can take a little while to get used to, especially after you first get new abilities, but once you master your movement, it begins to feel like second nature and makes you feel like a skilled player, even if you aren't, simply because it's so forgiving. You can jump, double jump, dash, swing, wall climb, and more as you progress. There's really quite a lot going on with traversal and different ways you can move about in different spaces, but it never feels overwhelming. Even by the time you're just a quarter or a third of the way into the game, you'll have a plethora of tools at your disposal with even more to come later on. The game's skill tree really makes you feel like you're constantly gaining power and getting better as you play the game. Most of the skill tree is focused around traversal, but that's really where the game shines brightest anyway. It's satisfying to unlock a new ability and have it permanently added to your repertoire going forward. But it's not all just about physical travel. 
there are a number of unlockable teleporters placed throughout the hub worlds that give you access to convenient fast travel locations. The game also gives you a plethora of checkpoints to save and respawn at throughout its levels. The game has an extensive inventory of unlockable outfits for both Nate and Nugget for you to spend your purple gems on. These gems are found everywhere in the game, just lying around, within breakable boxes, inside giant crystals, and from defeating enemies. Outfit retailers are located in the overworld and each hub world, and each location features a unique set of different outfits. There are also hidden collectible outfits located in suitcases throughout the world, though I found those ones less interesting. I may be missing a reference on those ones. Despite a number of the game's characters and environments featuring quite literally poop, blood, gore, and garbage, the visuals are surprisingly pleasing. The game's color palette is vibrant and bright, and the art style's cell-shaded adjacent look drastically lessens the crudeness of its subjects. And don't let the game's themes fool you. There's plenty to see, from islands to jungles to cyberpunk-esque cities. Most of it is actually quite charming. I find the game's level of difficulty to be pretty much perfect. Right from the start, the game never completely holds your hand, but it does ease you into things. It also never gets frustratingly hard. Sure, I may have to try a boss fight a dozen times before I can finally get it, but the end is always clearly in sight. Never did I feel like my goal was unobtainable or impossible. Everything always felt within reach, yet with the appropriate amount of challenge. Level of difficulty is one of the most common things that 3D platformer developers seem to struggle with. Often games are too easy or too hard, or the difficulty spikes too quickly, or it ramps up too slowly. Help High gets difficulty down to a science, and in the end it may be one of its most impressive triumphs. And I actually really like that every single level doesn't end with a traditional boss fight. It keeps things from getting stale and predictable. Combat in general remains feeling fresh, even though it mostly comes down to smashing one button. Just being able to swing and jump around your enemies allows you to attack combat situations from various different angles. I think the best part about Hellpie is that it just lets you play the game how you want to play it. You can traverse how you want, solve puzzles how you want, defeat enemies how you want, upgrade abilities how you want, and progress through the levels how you want. This high level of player agency isn't particularly common within the genre. Now, the handling of Nate can feel a bit floaty at times, especially when jumping from a small, narrow platform to another small, narrow platform. It's not quite as tight as I would like it to be, but it's by no means a deal breaker and you do sort of get used to it after a while. At worst, it's still among the better indie 3D platformers in this regard. However, the camera could use some tuning. The camera will occasionally act on its own. If you go in a direction that the game doesn't want you to go in for whatever reason, the camera may automatically adjust and turn 180 degrees, which can sometimes lead to Nate's death. I haven't quite figured out what it is that triggers the camera to automatically readjust at all times, and it doesn't happen too frequently, but when it does, it's annoying and almost always leads to my death, especially when it happens mid-jump or as I'm about to take off from a jump. Luckily, checkpoints are usually not far behind and the penalties for death are minuscule. There are also a few hidden areas leading to collectibles that don't provide a convenient way to return to where you were. And the easiest way to get back may be to simply fall off the ledge and respawn. In fact, in one hub world, I think there's quite literally not any way to get back from one of the collectibles at all, so I just jumped off the edge. It works just fine, but I do feel like this is a design flaw. Fortunately, it's almost meaningless in the grand scheme of things. This might be weird, but I feel like some of the levels in this game might actually be too long. The game contains some of the longest levels I've experienced in any 3D platformer. Sometimes they keep going on and on, and I'll just feel like it's time to move on to the next thing. And then other levels can feel really short, but maybe it's relative. Occasionally, enemies and other moving objects will suddenly appear to be running around at about 5 frames per second, which is strange and surely a visual bug, but it doesn't really harm gameplay at all since you as the player are moving just fine. Aside from that, I didn't really run into any bugs or glitches outside of 
one instance where I was stuck in some geometry between jumps, but I was able to just go into the menu and respawn at a nearby checkpoint. And then, of course, not every joke, especially the really gross and crude ones, will land perfectly well. Or land at all, for some people. This part of the game is going to really depend on your personal sense of humor. I don't find anything in the game particularly funny, but oddly enough, I find its insistence on being completely irreverent pretty charming and admirable, almost leaning into South Park in that way. So we've come to the part of the review where I make my conclusion and give my recommendation for this game or not. You guys can probably guess where I'm going with this one. Hell Pie reminds me a lot of A Hat in Time, only I think it actually feels more polished. And like A Hat in Time, this game will come as a massive welcomed surprise for fans of 3D platformers. This game honestly blew my expectations out of the water. We've gotten a wave of indie 3D platformers over the last 5 or 10 years of which A Hat in Time also played a part. Some of these games have been great, others have been completely forgettable. Hell Pie is one of the great ones, and I might consider it one of the best indie 3D platformers we have ever seen. I worry that this game could go overlooked and be hamstrung by its dedication to and excessive use of crude humor, and literal toilet humor. But that's also part of what makes it different. It's not your typical cutesy animal mascot platform. Hopefully people can see Hell Pie for the truly special and unique game that it is, whether or not you love the thematic content. Overall, I highly recommend this indie 3D action platformer collectathon. It's unclear what Hell Pie's price point will be set at as of the time of this recording, but I'd still recommend it at a full $60, though I doubt it's going to be set there. I would imagine it'll be set at $30, maybe $40 at most, in which case the game is an automatic day one purchase for any fan of the genre. At the end of the day, I fully expect a dedicated cult following to emerge around Hell Pie at the very least. It's a special experience that I'll be referring back to for years to come, and I can't wait to see what Sluggerfly does next. Hey guys, thanks for watching this review from the Goodnight Grooves. You can also check out our other reviews here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe for future reviews, Southern Fried Grooves, and more. And check out goodnightgrooves.com for the rest of our content, including the Game Grooves podcast. Shout out to our patrons, especially those honorary groups in our $5 plus tier. That's Andre D. and Jeremy R. And thank you to Sluggerfly and HeadUp for providing a review copy of the game.